So I guess none of the chairs are here and we're all just kind of sitting on the call waiting for something to happen. Does that sound right to everyone else? Sounds about right. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure um, all of us can probably figure out how to run the call. <laughs> ah, sounds like we have a volunteer. Uh, <laughs> uh, should we wait a couple of minutes more? Uh, maybe until 1.05? Well, we may be able to make it quick, so. Okay. We all have things to do too, so. That's true. I'll start the, uh, the getting the document together. Uh, it doesn't look like anyone had signed up to run the call this week either. Maybe we can. Um, do you want me to? Nah, it's not that useful. I was going to propose uh, starting on the updates, but yeah, that's fine. If we, if we don't have um, if we don't have any one describe or anywhere to put the scribe notes, it might also be slightly premature. Yeah. I can take scribes if you guys are going to drive the meeting. Okay. Azure. Great. Okay, so I, I guess maybe we will start with updates then. Is that okay? Works for me. All right, um, I'll go first. Uh, I've been working on due diligence and other documents related to things with Toph and to a much lesser extent in Toto, um, which Santiago will talk about with that. But um, yeah, I've been going through that part of the process, which isn't as well specified as I'd like. And what actually seems to happen in prog in practice seems to be quite different than the documentation. So um, I'm hoping those sorts of things will will settle over time. That's it for me. Uh, I can go um, to some next, or I'm in the list. Um, so we just did our Falco incubation review with the CNCF yesterday. Um, it looks like JJ and Dan are on the call now. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry for the delay. My prior meeting got uh, over time, but it uh, looks like Capos, you're running the show. Yeah. yeah. He, okay. Yeah. <laughs> now you are. <laughs> um, as part of um, our incubation review, Joe Beta is going to be looking at doing the due diligence, and then I think he's going to be reaching out to Sig Security and just getting Sig Security's thoughts on the Falco presentation or the proposal. Uh, I'll drop a link as soon as I can in the. Sorry, Ash, for messing you up, but I dropped the link in the document. I'll drop it in the chat as well for our proposal. Love to hear any of the community's thoughts or ideas around uh, our proposal and just the growth of the project and other things like that as well. Good, so. Um, so it's Emily, no real updates. We are still waiting on the floor plan for um, the room layout for SIG Security Day. Yeah, and registration is back open for that. So if you haven't gotten in, I suggest you do it ASAP. Uh, how, many, how many places have we got now? How much more? 
I think we have maybe like, depending upon how many cleared off the wait list, I would probably say like 25, but I'll ask and uh, I'll ask and correct. let me get an answer. 2025 seems accurate. Michael, um, can you hear okay, don't hear me? Dan? Yep, Dan. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, congratulations on a great presentation yesterday. I thought it went really well. Uh, excited to have uh, Joe and Gage there. And also really excited to, to see, you know, this will kind of be one of the first proof points where, um, you know, the TOC is going through a process, looking to document the process. And you know potentially uh, engage and 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 choose where to engage the the things. So that's great. Um, you know the the sort of interesting discussion that we didn't have uh, an opportunity to dive into uh, yesterday at the TOC meeting was you know kind of the delta between OPA and um, runtime policy interface. If I yeah. remember the. Um, you know, is that something that, um, you know, you want to go in uh, to deeper? Um, yeah, I'd just love, love to get your thoughts on that and you know, whether that's worth exploring or if that's just sort of an impl internal implementation detail that you view as, as something, you know, specific to Papa. Um, I think it's more of just um, something that's more specific to Falco and it's almost a way of creating an API for Falco and exposing it through what we call the runtime policy interface and kind of creating this reference architecture API for Twistlocks and Aquas and Stock Rocks and Falco and Cystic Secure and you know the three other or four other projects in the or products in this space so that there's like a common API to configure each one of those uh, tools and so that you can then start mm. getting into this idea of having some hierarchical model around how you apply runtime policy inside of your cluster and you have a, a either a CRD or it's a Kubernetes API directly that you would hit to configure cluster level policies to configure namespace level policies to configure deployment level policies that more focus on configuring these uh, these underlying runtime engines than what OPA does around helping you make decisions as developers are interacting with Kubernetes uh, and the cluster and deploying software and other things like that as well. So it's a it's a little bit of a different space, I feel. Got it. Yeah. I'd be happy to, uh, in a future call, talk about RPI and our thoughts and motivations I, on that. Yeah, I was gonna ask you, I mean, it will be good if we can open up an issue and uh, pick up a date where we can talk about it. I'm yeah. Curious okay. myself about it. Yeah. Okay, I dropped a link into the chat, and I'll make sure that we add uh, an item in the agenda. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. That's great. All right, back to updates, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so we we haven't set up an ag agenda for today's meeting so we'll get an update and then we'll uh, uh, we'll keep the agenda open in terms of like uh, what people want to talk about unless somebody already has an agenda planned there is no discussion of agenda before you got on the call okay. i think we were just starting to do the updates so i think uh, we want to run through those real quick yep, yep. Uh, I, I have a potential major topic if i can propose something uh, i'll i'll chat in the next all right sounds good yeah Okay, uh, I had the, an update about the supply chain security uh, project. I made the first PR of the, the process catalog. Uh, I think uh, Brendan took a look at it, uh, but I, I would like it more or less people to, to look at it and like chime in. Uh, something that I, that I also was, started digging into was the security hub uh, from Falco, because I think uh, some of the researchers can be uh, Adopted or moved over or shared or or just you know, like general collaboration uh, between both projects. Uh, I'll post the link of the of the PR so everybody. Yeah.
yeah, if you can All right, so who's next on the update? Probably me. This is Amy. Um, Amy. We have the updates for uh, the security day that's already happening there, and uh, KubeCon is coming, as you all know. Pretty much it from my side. Awesome. Patch. Next one on the list. Oh, me? Yes. And I don't have, uh, I mean, I think Dan covered a little bit on uh, RPA. Uh, we had a meeting with uh, Joan Liz earlier today. Um, so, yeah, uh, like what uh, Dan said, like we have, uh, we are working through a process in terms of like how to uh, how to co-engage with SIG in term, uh, in project onboarding. So that's going to be an evolving process, but I think we are getting some clarity there. Uh, the other thing that came up about was the RPA, um, which I think would be, I'd be interested in learning a little bit more. And I think it's useful for the commu uh, for the group to know a little bit more about, which I think uh, Michael's taking a lead on that. So yeah, that's mostly what I had from my side on updates. Uh, no updates from me this week. Uh, just wanted to get some information about the OPA assessment PR. Uh, what's the status on that? It's been around 22 days since it's been open. Do we want to close on that? Are there more comments? Uh, so if you guys have any thoughts on that, that will be really appreciated. Yep, I think I went over that a, a little bit and made a few comments, I think, but uh, not nothing major. Uh, yeah, I'd encourage everyone else to uh, probably give them about a week until uh, next Wednesday, and I would just close it. Sounds good. Thanks. Awesome. Um, all right. So that's. So I, I, I was going to uh, do a check in, but I, I turned it into a um, okay. agenda topic. <laughs> yep. Go for it. Go for it. Yeah, I think we're done with the check in. So uh, take it up. Dan. Great. Uh, so, so coming out of this discussion, uh, and you know, uh, you know with, with our TSC representatives, Liz and Joe, uh, and you know, just just beginning to explore what the interaction, um, you know, patterns, and and eventually you know, potentially policy, um, you know, we would want to see happen with uh, um, with the SIGs. So. I think uh, you know really uh, you know useful thing to to define um, you know our you know, what what are the things that you know if uh, you know TOC member like Joe uh, were to you know ask for guidance um, or um, you know should they engage with SIG security um, you know if we had you know sort of prepackaged three three to five questions that let's start with three um three questions that we would want to um to ask a project to you know to decide if we want to spend time with them um you know what would those questions be uh and uh you know, you know that way we we would uh you'll know, be able to you know, joe's plugged in with us so it's a natural fit you know but you know assuming in the next the iteration, you know, it's not Joe, it's not someone that's our, you know, TOC representative, um, and we, we'd still want that uh, engagement and having to set an expectation that, uh, uh, you know, we're, um, you know, going to, to partner with, with our TOC members to, to deliver um, subject matter expertise and, you know, potentially engage folks in um, you know, our processes like the assessment. Just wanted to open the floor on that. Um, you know, first, I guess we could uh, start with is um, is defining a few questions uh, you know viable? Uh, does anyone have any questions about the um, the process or the interaction um, and or you know a proposal of, of what um, that those questions may be? Yeah. Uh, so I just threw in the channel, or I'm sorry, in the Zoom chat. Um, 
a link to the CNCF talks due diligence template. Um, it's my understanding that this whole document doesn't necessarily need to be filled out, but the reviewers use it as a thing to guide the questions that they ask to make sure that the project is of suitable um, completeness to be considered for the next level. Um, so this might give you a good jumping off point um, to kind of think about what are the questions from a security perspective that we're most interested in out of this long list. Uh, speaking of the due diligence template, and, uh, is it documented how it is used uh, within the like within the process of reviewing a uh, talk? No, it's not. Um, it's so this is essentially what Joe would then go and take and do use to do research and to ask questions about Falco himself and then he goes back to the TOC and says yes I believe that the what Falco has proposed meets our criteria and then I've went through and done the due diligence and I'm comfortable with the project but I don't believe it's like uh, my understanding and Amy correct me if I'm wrong the projects don't have to fill out this and answer all of these questions in order to be considered to move to the next level this is just kind of guidance that's given to the reviewer so for incubation, I believe that's correct. For graduation, it's much more focused around being able to be complete. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, I believe it would be good to have that blurb of text saying that's what needs to happen somewhere. I may have missed it, but I I recently read through most of those documents and couldn't find exactly what purpose of this due diligence document serves. Sure. And as someone who just went through being asked to go to or asking to go to incubation, I agree with that sentiment. It's it's hard to understand. And then even when I think to Dan's point, uh, which is a great reason for him to bring this up, it's like when Joe goes and asks Six Security to take a look, what does that mean? Right. From Six Security's perspective. Which I, I honestly don't feel like I have a good answer for that. I, I also feel uh, we uh, in danger uh, running in circles because my understanding is that the security assessment was serving a similar purpose. Uh, and it was, it's documented that they should provide a recommendation of the choice, right? Right. So, so yeah, you know, that's a great point, Sandy. It, it's so, um, you know, the assessment process is applicable and, you know, capability that, that we're, uh, you know, bringing to um, these processes that hasn't existed uh, in the past. And, um, you know, the thing that I don't want to do right now is, you know, especially since we have a, you know, volunteer group that is, uh, you know, supporting this is, um, you know, advocate for, an explicit mandate, right? You know, I, I think we're still in that discovery phase of how we work together, how we set expectations, um, you know, how we deliver on resourcing that, um, you know, what happens when, uh, you know, things get uh, too, there's too many projects, uh, you know, that exceed our uh, volunteer capacity, how do we deal with that? Uh, what's the interplay between an assessment uh, and a formal um, security audit. So, you know, there's, there's a lot to, um, to sort of tease out. And, you know, I, I do think that one of the, um, the, the questions could be, like, have you signed up for a security assessment, right? Do you think that your uh, team would benefit from, you know, an in-depth look uh, in collaboration with, the, with SIG Security? That's the, the, you know, the, the sort of uh, questions that, that you know, we can uh, put forth to, to, to Joe and, and subsequently to TOC members to begin to define what we expect and what we want um, in uh, this engagement and, and yeah. to just sort of negotiate. 
Yeah, and I, um, so like each respect, my understanding is each respective SIG would go and be asked to take a look at a project that follows under the purview of that. So like, um, since Falco is a security tool, they're asking SIG security. Now, SIG security would be asked to do an assessment on a tool that's not necessarily a security tool because they do the security assessments, right? Um, but I think we could probably come up with a generic list of questions that the SIG should be asking, whether if you're SIG security or SIG, I, I don't know, authorization, I can't think of another SIG name. Storage, like, here's, a, here's a good uh, example. So we have something in, in our uh, you know, sort of operating uh, minds to, to, to uh, you know, use counterpoints. Uh, storage, so SIG storage yeah, yeah. and uh, Key Cloak uh, has a, um, a, a you know, data storage that you know it, it relies on internally, and you know it's it's just a relational database. Uh, it doesn't have a storage abstraction, um, so you know that would be an issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think we could ask questions around like you know, does this project participate in the community? Are they bringing things forward? Uh, uh, is the project seen within, you know, SIG Security as a well-known project that's used? Um, and is it technologically sound by, um, by members of, of that respective group, right? And kind of like more generic questions rather than yeah. like explicit metrics. Yeah, this is not assessment level questions. This is just uh, engagement level. Uh, you know, should should we uh, you know engage or um, you know is uh, you know given that um, you know there there's a security component to this. Um, you know, we would explicitly you know like to you know just assess that and um, you know think that this you know, interacts with or conflicts with the, uh, you know, XYZ component in the ecosystem. Yeah. Santiago, does that, does that uh, make sense? I mean, I, part, part of what we're also sort of, you know, the meta challenge that we're grappling with is the TOC is, um, you know, taking their process uh, and trying to make it a bit formal along the way, right? So there's formalization that's happening at that level and, you know, we have uh, been formalizing and, uh, you know, making our own processes more robust uh, and, you know, now it's time to sort of, you know, negotiate some of that fit up. Uh, it, it does make sense to me. Uh, I just, uh, I just think we can make the most out of, uh, the resources that we already built in SIG security so as to provide, uh, information that they can use to make their decisions. Uh, and I think, uh, we work very hard in figuring out what the, self-assessment should look like. So I think we can somewhat reuse some of that work. Great, yeah, and I, I think we should also, um, you know, continue to use this uh, opportunity to, uh, you know, formalize uh, and, you know, grow understanding of how, um, you know, we schedule and, uh, you know, fit in assessments mm -hmm. you know so the full the full process so security assessments aren't required for incubation but they're required for graduation is that right yes that is correct so um what if we came up with like uh to santiago's point that he just made um what if we came up with like uh, what are the 10 questions from that security assessment or there's obviously a lot more than 10, but like, what's the minimum things you need to do from security perspectives point of view to move into incubation, right? And that would be a very easy thing. And they, you know, it doesn't have to be binding. Um, but like, this is, these are the minimum 
recommended best practices and those kind of become the questions that we ask. But I thought Dan's uh, suggestion was more along the lines of, of basically, you know, baiting or, or inducing the, the projects to actually engage with us. So it should be like three questions that are interesting for them that they say, gotcha. oh, maybe I should talk to these guys. And then, then we can go into the detail and give them the whole suite of questions. But what are kind of the three uh, questions that a project should ask themselves whether that makes them realize that maybe they should talk to us. And I actually don't know what those would be, but uh, I think that could be interesting. We, we can go on this path, but my view is, is that the point of the self-assessment and the other things around this were to get the information we need to do an assessment. And I think the, like to, to understand the security of the system. And I think that the, um, just, just ultimately um, going and trying to distill it down in a different way, um, especially if it's something we're trying to get some uniformity in across projects may not make a lot of sense. That was one of the kind of issues we realized when we started to put the assessment together is, is that, um, you know, like you, you're just gonna have very different security perspective depending on what the project is because cloud native is so broad. So we, we can sort of, you know, try this, but the three questions I would list if I had to list them is, you know, did you talk to the security, the SIG security group? Did you do a security self-assessment? What did the SIG security group say in response in their, in their review? Um, but maybe that's just me. I mean, yeah, I tend to agree. We've, we've, we've come up with this process that we, we think is a good one. And uh, I mean, and I think we need the TSE to agree with us that it's the right thing for projects to do. I, mean, I don't think it's even, it's not at the moment even compulsory for graduating projects. So at the moment, it's, it just seems a bit that they're not, they they seem to like it when we presented the April one, but we, they, I don't feel we've got a formal buy-in for it at the moment. Which is what we're negotiating, right? Like this is the opportunity to begin to negotiate and formalize that. Um, and, you know, they, um, up until, you know, this past year, there was kind of an open question of, whether, you know, SIGs and working groups would even be a thing uh, at the CNCF level and, you know, uh, sort of minimizing that. And now, um, you know, SIGs have, you know, kind of turned a corner and they are, you know, serving as a density of subject matter expertise. Um, and, you know, the, the, the state of the universe and the system has, has evolved. Uh, so, you know, we can begin to, um, to help formalize and participate in, in that process. Um, Michael, you know, uh, I, I think there might be, uh, you know, an interesting, uh, you know, exploration for us to, to sort of assess here where, uh, you know, Falco, given all of the, you know, work that you have to do with incubation, um, you know, you decided uh, to, um, you know, make the choice of, of not doing the, the, uh, the security assessment since it was not compulsory, right? Um, and, right. you know, if it were compulsory, um, would you have made the same uh, decision? Probably not, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, we'll, we would right? have to do it if it was compulsory, right? Sure. <laughs> Um, you know, and, uh, you know, what, what were the, what are the factors that, you know, led you to make that decision? Um, so I'm not operating on assumptions, you know, um, we just didn't have the bandwidth given the timeline of sure. when our meeting was. And of course we're wanting yeah. to try and get the incubation vote done before KubeCon. So it's, it's right. a timing yeah. thing. Yeah, totally reasonable. Right. Yeah. And, you know, uh, Oh, sorry, I think it says something okay. though, 
I, I don't mean this as, as like a, uh, I, I'm not trying to fire a shot at Falco here. Um, no, I'm trying to fire a shot at the TOC. Let me just say this ahead of mm -hmm. time. But to me, if the TOC says, well, you know, um, we, we would rather, like, we, we, you know, it just takes too long to figure out if something's secure. And that's just, you know, stopping us from putting things into the incubation phase. That to me is a big problem and it's exactly the wrong message to send. I, I would think that, you know, if we're trying to align uh, people like Falco and others to be more secure, if the TOC cares at all about security, that's supposed to be something that's aspired to, which I think is one of their goals with projects, then in, instead um, they should really be pushing us to expeditiously do an assessment of Falco and viewing that as a way to get Falco in faster rather than slower. Yeah. yeah. Agree, sort of a fast track process, a carrot for projects who do it. Yeah, and you know, quite honestly, like if they would have told us like the requirement to get in is to do the security assessment and then, you know, these three other, or the other criteria, like healthy number of commits, three end users of produ in production of note, and I forget the other two, requirements. I mean, if security assessment was one of those things, we would have shifted time to go and do that. But the problem is, is like the, the requirements are somewhat vague and opaque and opinionistic. So like we spend, instead of spending time doing the security assessment, we spent time basically putting together a pitch deck, for lack of a better word, trying to make our case, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and if the, if the requirements were much less opaque and opinionistic, then we could, we could just make sure that we're, if we meet these very <coughs> opinionated requirements, I can, I don't have to spend time selling it and, and worrying about it being mm -hmm. a subjective process. Right. And when it's a subjective process, I'm going to go spend all my time making the sale versus making sure I hit the metrics in an opinion. Right. Which is, you know, which, which is kind of the jumping off point for me, you know, in, uh, you know, making sure that the TOC members are armed with like things that they need to, you know, ask the SIGs um, rather than um, it just being a subjective question that comes to us. And like at a high level, it could be subjective or it could be formal. I would like to, you know, um, ensure that, that there's some level of consistency, there's some level of, you know, breadcrumb that we, uh, you know, leave both the project and uh, our members and, you know, that we're uh, evolving, um, you know, we can change this over time, but we, you know, we should be evolving, you know, that, that process uh, rather than just having it be entirely subjective. Yeah. Right, and, and one other thing I want to just add in here is um, if you want to look at a project that took the exact opposite approach, you should look at Intoto. Where with Intoto, we spent a tremendous amount of time doing the security assessment uh, and going through that process and going through it in detail and getting everybody to, get on this group, I think, to be very excited about it as evidenced by Santiago now going and you know doing all the software supply chain work here and, and all the other stuff like that. I think, I think you know, really that that project went way above and beyond on the SIG security side. But then when we went to present to the TOC, you know, we spent a few days and put the deck together and did things like that. But we really got hammered um, and, and got added into sandbox instead of incubation where we had kind of thought we were going to be added in. So, so far, the kind of message from the TOC is pitch deck is more important than substance. At least that's, that's a message that I've heard and I think is, is the wrong message. Right on. Yeah, I guess like I would put it a different way. It was like making your case is more important than. Um, um, I mean, than the the objective yeah. data. So some context and some discussions that are going on around that itself is. Uh, I mean, TOC is well aware of. Uh, lack of clarity and uh, the need to be need to be providing clarity to 
to uh, intake project right and uh, one of the things that we were talking about earlier earlier today was uh, <clears throat> an iterative way to frame the questions where the inputs that are given from six security is relevant uh, and useful for toc to make a decision so it becomes a little bit more substance driven than uh, pitch tech driven so to speak right so uh, so there is an awareness to that process uh, or lack of process there and then uh, awareness to be able to uh, gain more insights and information to make an informed decision um, so it will be useful for us like what dan uh, started mentioning to frame those kinds of questions that both we should be asking toc and TOC, toc should be asking us uh, that's like highly specific highly relevant uh, from coming from six security that will be useful in evaluating the project and uh, it, there is a fair amount of understanding that it's going to be an evolving set of questions it's not going to, not going to stop at three uh, or five questions uh, but it will be useful as a group for us to say like look, these are the things i think we should be evaluating part of a security assessment uh, or taking a security project uh, into cncf right and this is our uh, this is our data gathering process. So, say as simple as fitment, uh, fitment in terms of like what are the use cases that a project solves uh, and how it solves the use cases and how does a project fit into the landscape that we, we are thinking about. And uh, this, is, this is the input to TOC itself would be a super useful uh, data for TOC to make decisions. And I'd like us to hone in on that, add more to it as a group. Uh, I mean, what, what about the what about the non-security? You specifically said security projects there, but the the, the non-security projects that's a um, great question are also are also important because um, they're even le less likely to think about security issues in many cases. Right, right. Uh, no, that's a great question because uh, the con. Contrary of that is like one of the projects that they were evaluating the uh, security projects that they were evaluating. They'd have to, uh, uh, I mean, it would be nicer to get uh, six storages input on that to say like, is the storage abstracted enough that you could swap out storage, or is it like highly contained that uh, it's not quote unquote cloud native, right? So. Uh, in similar veins, I think any of the non-security projects will have a component of security all the way to the extent of, oh, this is Prometheus, it doesn't have security, uh, or it's not, security is not its concern. Uh, and that being established itself will be a useful stuff. But, uh, uh, but I don't know how to, I mean, at this point, I'm uh, considering the amount of work that we have. Uh, I leave it up to TOC to call it out in terms of like this project looks and feels uh, something that I want an input from SIG security and then we'll, we'll take it up to say, like, okay, let's take a look at it. Right? Um, and if the project is proactive uh, and it wants to pass it by SIG security to get inputs, which I would hope eventually we'd get to that state, then uh, that'll be a super welcome change as well. But that's a good point, yeah, in terms of uh, why non-security and why, like, I mean, it's obvious in terms of like a security project, yes, it makes sense. Uh, non-security project, it does make sense, but it becomes like somewhat on a need basis. Does it make sense? Just in C? Oh. Which Justin, since, since you're ambiguous, I'll jump in here. <laughs> I, I want to say uh, that I think, I think all projects, philosophically, I think all projects should have some security review. I think the days when we say that a project doesn't have to worry about, or a project doesn't have to worry about security, I think that's like a laughable statement. Um, and I'm not trying to call Prometheus out by name, but I think it's, it's, it's laughable in 2019 for any project to say that security isn't a concern 
-hmm. So even if all we say is um, there are some rough edges, beware, don't use it in these terrible ways, or for the thing you're likely to use it for, it's secure enough uh, for these reasons. And you can do your own risk assessment and figure out if you know you need to be more concerned than than we were when we did our assessment. That I think would be helpful. Yep, I agree. The other so how can we get those concerns to the TOC? Right, it seems like they 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 think of us in a similar way as as storage, and and we think we are more like a horizontal, I guess, um, right. in, in that it affects all projects and not just security project, right? Uh, I, I guess storage is, is specifically engaged in, in storage related projects. I think you can clearly say this is not a storage project for some of them, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure like if we bring this up to TOC saying like, uh, we want to take a smell test on every project that comes in, uh, TOC would be happily saying like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, maybe we should do uh, to Capos's point. Uh, I think we sh should pitch in and uh, give give our thoughts on those projects. Um, I'd be happy to bring it up, or if uh, you want to bring it up with the TOC, that will be that will be okay as well. Um, I'm I'm in the middle of a bunch of other discussions with them about the tough things and stuff like that, so that may kind of muddy the water a bit. Okay, uh, it's, it's probably more appropriate for the one of the chairs to bring it up. I I don't really care who. All right, I'll drop a note. Uh, I'll keep the team informed. Awesome. Uh, so we have. Do we have? Any other topic that we want to cover? Otherwise, like we can give 15 minutes back to everyone's life. Dan, any closing thoughts? No. Awesome. All right. Thanks, you all. Cheers, everyone. Have a good day. Mm -hmm. Bye. Have a good day.